What happens with students, and I see this all the time, they start university, but with the mindset that they're constantly looking for excuses about why things aren't going the way they want, why they're disappointed with their exam results, why they don't think their professor is teaching them effectively, why they keep getting up late and missing classes. And when you do that, you take all the power you have in your life and you give it away. You just throw it all away because you're blaming other people. By blaming your professors or your university or your friends or family or your circumstances, you give your power away to them, but you need to embrace it. Think about the lies that you tell yourself to rationalize being lazy. When you take the easy road and you leave discipline behind. When you say to yourself, I'll start studying for my exam tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes and you say, I'll start studying for my exam tomorrow. And the exam deadline is getting closer and closer. And a few days before the exam, you realize you haven't started studying yet. And the panic sets in and the sleepless nights begin. It's too late. It's the day of the exam. You sit at your desk, you open the exam paper for the first time, and you experience that all too common sinking feeling when you realize you don't know the answer to any of the questions. You know what I'm talking about. We've all been there. It's the excuses and the lack of discipline that are taking you down paths that you shouldn't be going. There are a million reasons why you're disappointed, but the reasons are not important. What is important is what you do about it. What is important is how you're going to spin it so that you take advantage of the situation. Failed an exam? Good! Study two hours a day extra from now on. Had an argument with a friend? Good! You just had a crucial lesson in social science. Try to stay more calm next time. Keep waking up late and getting to class late? Good. Go to sleep earlier and wake up earlier tomorrow. Whatever your problems are, they are fixable. You just have to persevere. And as you work at it brick by brick, you might start out awfully inefficient and incompetent at studying. But being willing to put in the work and grind it out and becoming someone who people actually look up to and admire? At that moment in your life, you'll realize it was worth it. All the pain, the suffering, the late night study grinds, it was all worth it. Procrastination. The enemy to every single student on the planet. We all do it, but it's destructive. It destroys ambition, it destroys dreams, it destroys exam grades report grades, scholarships. It destroys progress, creativity, ideas. It can even hold you back from graduating. When it's time to study and you start to feel your mind drifting onto other things, when you sit down at your desk and open your textbook but the TV is staring at you, or notifications pop up on your phone from your friends, it's at this moment you need to reset, get aggressive, and study. Do not wait. Waiting is what feeds procrastination, and the feeling will get stronger and stronger until you're no longer thinking about studying anymore. Do not take the easy way out. Do not give up and take the easy road. That's what the bottom 90% are doing. Do you want to be in the bottom 90% or do you want to be in the top 10%? Because it's the decision you make just as the feeling of distraction is creeping up on you that is the deciding factor of where you're going to be. Fight the procrastination and get your studying done. Don't leave it for tomorrow. You'll be busy with other things tomorrow. Do it today. Right now, make today count. As Eric Thomas said, I don't believe in the word procrastination. I told a young lady in Australia who told me she was a procrastinator. I said, look, if I told you to meet me here tomorrow at 5 a.m. and I'm going to give you $3 million, where would you be? She said, I'd be right here at 4.59 a.m. ready to get that $3 million. I said, right. Then there's no such thing as procrastination. What it is, is that it's not important to you. It's not something that's urgent enough for you. And when something is not urgent, then you put it off. 
If it's not meaningful to you and it's not important to you, then you're not going to make it a priority. So what you have to do is find out how to make it meaningful. How can you make it purposeful? How can you make it stick? And when you can find that out, I promise you, you'll get up early, you'll get there first, and you'll do whatever it takes to make that goal a reality. So to me, it's not a procrastination issue, it's a priority issue. Education is the great equalizer that levels the playing field and gives the average person a shot at extraordinary success. If you work hard and stay focused on your dream, you can achieve it. But it's procrastination that often gets in the way for most of us. We all have things that we'd rather be doing, things that give us short-term pleasure but are destructive in the long run. But it's what you do when you get to that edge that determines what you're going to be. Having the skill to turn your failures and incompetences into a positive force, into actions that make you strong and build you up, it can take years of effort before you can do it properly, but it will completely transform your life. Imagine every failure you endure and you don't see it as a failure, you see it as another challenge that can be used to your advantage to make you smarter, stronger, faster because we're built for struggle as human beings. We're built to challenge the world. You want challenges because challenges toughen you up. You don't want an environment where you're sheltered from all obstacles and so you don't grow and you don't suffer setbacks because I can guarantee you in the long term, you won't be happy. Like Jordan Peterson said, people have extracted unbelievable successes out of catastrophic failures. And I'm not saying that in a naive way. I know perfectly well what happens to people. You're doing fine in life and then you get cancer. And then six months later, you're dead. And all the heroism in the world isn't going to save you at that point. But that's not the point. Life is full of obstacles and heartache and failure and catastrophic losses in all shapes and sizes. But that doesn't mean you don't go out there and take life by the horns. As Barack Obama said, excuses are tools of the incompetent used to build bridges to nowhere and monuments of nothingness. But we have no time for excuses. Nobody is going to give you anything that you have not earned. Nobody cares how tough your upbringing was. Nobody cares if you suffered from discrimination. And you have to remember that whatever you have gone through, it pales in comparison to the hardships previous generations have endured. And they overcame them. And if they overcame them, you can overcome them too. When you do come across failure, which you absolutely will, you must get something out of it. And every time you fail and you learn from that failure, that's one step up the ladder to success. You'll have to overcome hardships every day. Every day is going to be hard. There's a reason why only some students can climb to the top of the class. There's a reason why only the top few can achieve a 4.0 GPA. This is going to be a long, hard journey, and you're going to have to grow layer after layer of skin to brush all these problems off that are going to arise and turn them from disadvantages to advantages. When you do come across failure, which you absolutely will, you must get something out of it. And every time you fail and you learn from that failure, that's one step up the ladder to success. You might have to fail 20 times just to succeed once, but that's just how it goes. No one succeeds the first time. And having this skill, and it really is a skill, having this skill to turn your failures and incompetences into a positive force, into actions that make you strong and build you up, it can take years of effort before you can do it properly, but it will completely transform your life. 
You might have just missed out on a scholarship, or you might even have to retake the year. But you can be absolutely certain that you'll come back with vengeance, with more determination in your eyes than you ever knew you had. You'll blow those exams out of the water. You'll storm past your friends and classmates. You'll take leadership in all the group work you're involved with. You'll be the person that everyone looks up to. The person that, if they had to pick one person in the entire class who they thought would be successful in the future, it would be you because these are your failures and you learn not to be disappointed with failure. You understand it and use it to your advantage. Imagine every failure you endure and you don't see it as a failure. You see it as another challenge that can be used to your advantage to make you smarter, stronger, faster because we're built for struggle as human beings. We're built to challenge the world like Jordan Peterson said, people have extracted unbelievable successes out of catastrophic failures. And I'm not saying that in a naive way. I know perfectly well what happens to people. You're doing fine in life and then you get cancer. And then six months later, you're dead. And all the heroism in the world isn't going to save you at that point. But that's not the point. Life is full of obstacles and heartache and failure and catastrophic losses in all shapes and sizes. But that doesn't mean you don't go out there and take life by the horns. We're getting too soft as a culture. And that's what happens when we get 100 years of prosperity. Things become easier. And that's a great thing. It means we become more educated. Our universities use technology to teach us more efficiently. More is known about our subject field. But these technological advances also breed procrastination. It's never been so easy to get distracted. We have screens everywhere. Our phones, our laptops, tablets, the TV, video consoles, which is bad enough as it is. But that, combined with a culture that is getting too soft, that doesn't know the meaning of discipline and work ethic, it leads to even more serious procrastination issues on a huge scale. Once you're focused with the task on hand, you won't even think about getting distracted. It's being able to fight procrastination and refine your discipline to get the best education possible. Just start. That's the hardest part. Just start. Get in the zone of studying. Turn your notifications off. Turn your TV off. Lock your door. Put your headphones on and settle in for a few hours of studying. So the next time you're facing a decision where you want instant gratification and you forget about the long-term goal and you forget about the dreams you have, that's when it's time to get excited. You need to pump yourself up. You need to remember the reason why you're doing it. You need to close your eyes and see where you're going to be in 10 or 20 years time. You need to smell it, hear it, and feel it within you exactly how it will be if you decide to push your work back and procrastinate. And if you decide to stay focused and stay disciplined and get the work done. It's on you. No one else can make that decision for you. Burn that long-term dream into your mind. Think about it. Talk about it. Write about it. Stick post-it notes around your room about it. But most importantly, do something about it. There's one thing motivational channels never tell you. It's something they all avoid saying, even though it can be the most motivational two words you'll ever hear. They all avoid saying it. It's these two words. You can't. Because let me tell you, when someone tells me that I can't do something, when someone doesn't believe in me or looks down on me or sees me as weak and powerless, I don't care who it is. My parents, my friends, my professors at university, society, it doesn't matter. When I'm told you can't, I'll prove you wrong. When you try to drag me down, I'll bounce back twice as strong with more focus, more discipline, more determination than ever before. Because you chose the wrong person to mess with. Because a lot of people would be discouraged and intimidated and fall back when they're told they can't do something. Most people are like that and that's fine. It's normal to feel that way. It's normal to feel discouraged when the people around you are dragging you down. But that's not me. 
I turned that negative energy into obsession. I studied three hours more every day. I stay focused like a laser. Procrastination doesn't stand a chance when I'm in obsession mode. And it's the negative comments, the people saying you can't, that fuels this obsession to become stronger and stronger. I can study 12 hours a day, it's easy. I go to the gym in the morning, study for four hours, eat, study for four hours, eat, study for four hours, then sleep. It becomes a routine, a set of daily habits that I carry out religiously, and I love every minute of it. The studying, which I once struggled with, has become an obsession that I love. I look forward to it every morning. I love learning about the world around me. I love the satisfaction at the end of the day after studying for 12 hours. I love the sense of accomplishment. I love the feeling of my grades increasing from C's to B's to A's. I love when my friends ask me what grade I got, and I love the shock on their faces when I tell them. Studying for exams, something that I used to struggle with on a daily basis, the struggle with focus, and the struggle with procrastination, the struggle with constant distractions. It's now so much easier, and I have my haters to thank for that. When they told me I can't, they fueled me. They gave me the energy to power through, to love what I'm studying, to study at a level which I thought was impossible just a year ago. My haters made it possible. The people around me trying to drag me down helped me, and for that, I'll be forever grateful.